Uh, what else have we got out? Uh, Pearl. Do you remember some time ago I reviewed X, which is a film by Ty West who made I House do. of the Devil? Okay. So X was set in the 1970s. Um, Townies go to a Texas farm to make an adult film. Mia Goth played two roles. She played Maxine and Pearl, although it was possible, as I said at the time, she played to Maxine and Maxine and Pearl. Although it was possible to watch the film without knowing that, and I very carefully in my review of the original, you'd have to say it now because otherwise the film wouldn't make any sense, that it was perfectly possible to watch the film without realising that she was playing a dual role. Um, because? Because the, she looked so completely different and everything about the performance was so completely different. Pearl is, when they get to the farm, basically the farm is owned by this kind of hellfire uh, family with it on the television. There's all this stuff about hellfire and brimstone, and uh, the movie is being made by people in the adult film industry. It all goes very bad. Good squishy pastiche fun. This now is the prequel. How Pearl became the character that Pearl is in X. So this is co-written by Mia Goth. Apparently, her and Ty West uh, wrote the script together during lockdown. Set. Way back, Shadow of the Great War, of course, the pandemic. So there is because after the Great War there was the there was the pandemic, as you know. So there are masks involved. There is infection out there. So weirdly enough, that kind of ties in with what was recently happening with this COVID. Is the kind of which was incorrectly labelled Asian flu. Is that what it was? Yes, because yes. it, it, it's it's actually. Um, Flu, Spanish flu, or whatever flu. Yeah. We just like to blame some somebody else for it. Yeah. Anyway, um, so. The film uses this kind of luscious, I mean, very processed, but it's processed to look like the Technicolor hues of a Douglas Sirk movie. Lots of nods to The Wizard of Oz, a score by Tyler Bates, Tim Williams, that takes us right back to the kind of golden age of Hollywood. Lots of surging strings, I mean, really sort of beautifully surging strings. Everything about it looks like, you know, genuinely an, an old movie. And we meet Mia Goth's character. She is Pearl. She is writing letters to her beloved who is off fighting. And she's being chastised by her sternly Germanic mother, who is also caring for her invalid father, who is very ill and can't say anything at all, but is still a presence. And as in during the pandemic, her mother doesn't want her going out because if you go out, you risk bringing infections back into the house. She doesn't want to catching anything, whether it's viral or immoral. So sort of shades of Carrie White's mother from uh, from Carrie. But when Pearl does go to town, she sneaks into the movies and she sees the dancers on the movies. She sees, you know, and then she's then befriended. And I use the phrase pr appropriately by the projectionist who says, hey, come into my projection booth. I can show you all the wonders of the cinema. And he then sends her, he shows her a, what, what I think these referred to as stag reels. And she says, what is this? And he says, this, this is the future of cinema. This is, you know, this is what's... What's a stag reel? The old pornos. Oh, I mean, okay. you know, but from, they used to be, because they used to be played in gentlemen smoking clubs, I think is okay. what they were officially referred to. She wants to, she wants to be a movie star. She wants to be a movie dancer. And if that, you know, it means that she has to escape from the cloister of the farm, then so be it. And at one point, she seems to be about to introduce her invalid father to the local crocodile or alligator. Mia Goth is a force of nature. Um, I, I remember when I was reviewing uh, X and I said, she's out there. And you said, what do you mean by out there? And I said, well, as in, there's something mesmerizing about her screen presence and kind of borders on the sort of almost madness. Next week, we will see her in Infinity Pool, which is absolutely out there and then some. That's the new film by Brandon Cronenberg, which is, I mean, really something, but really, really far out there. In terms of this film, this is actually weirdly comparatively restrained in comparison to X. I mean, X was an 18 certificate movie. This is a 15 certificate. BBFC says strong violence, gore, threat, sex, domestic abuse, as opposed to the 18, which X got, which was a strong bloody violence, gore, sex, and sexual threat. Um, her performance is just terrific. It's somewhere between a kind of fairy tale dream of this young, glowing world and this screaming nightmare. And the film ends, I mean, obviously you know where the you know the direction of it because you know the story of, of X. The film ends with a, a hold on her face, smiling at the camera. And 
Do you remember the the video by Sinead O'Connor for Nothing Compares to You, which is just the shot on her face and this range of emotions that goes through it? Or the end of The Long Good Friday, in which Bob Hoskins is in the car and the camera just looks at Bob Hoskins' face for the end of the movie. I would say that Mia Goth's final shot at the end of Pearl is on a par with those, wow. like literally just watch somebody's face telling you uh, a range of things. The scene in which she befriends the scarecrow in the uh, in the local field is brilliantly twisted. I mean, her pearl, this it's her performance is somewhere between like Gone with the Wind, Wizard of Oz, Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a bit of Ed Gein thrown in. I mean, it's fun and pastiche, but it's also kind of weirdly heartfelt. And I think that's one of the the, the things about Mia Goth. It's very it's pastiche is very very hard to get right because it it only works if there's a sincerity involved in it. And when you watch her on screen, there is something very sincere and very raw about her performances, even when they they are when they can be campy or they can be OTT or they can be she understands genre. And um one really neat thing here is at the end of X there was this really haunting version of Chelsea Wolfe singing a song called Wee Wee Marie. Well, Wee Wee Marie was a song from the First World War. Arthur Fields did it in World War One, and it's a kind of, it was just like a saucy song about Wee Wee Marie, if you do this for me, I'll do that for you. And it's like a kind of, you know, end of the pier song. And at the end of X, they've got this really haunting, dreamy, nightmarish version of that song. Well, of course, here, because we've taken back to where we are, they use the original, but it's just sort of appears, which is a very, very neat. If you know X, it's a lovely kind of callback. I thought this was great. I mean, I I so enjoyed it, and I I it was really lovely to see to see a horror franchise doing something interesting with a spinoff. And I would refer us back to the previous email about Scream Six. This is what happens when you take something that you love and you make something with love and care and attention for it. Is Scream 6 is what happens when you don't care. Cinematic, really? Yes, okay. yes. And and I mean, actually should should be seen on a big screen because there are, there are shots in it of farms and fields and glowing skies that really want to be seen on a big screen. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.